Hey, oh my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Coaster Spotlight. Today we have another architect bundle, starting things off with a gigantic polar coaster, followed up with a cool jungle run, and finishing things off with an incredible recreation. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, welcome back. Hope you are all having a fantastic day. Hope everyone is excited for spring. I certainly am. If you guys are new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button. If you end up enjoying the video, leave us a like and come join us on Discord. We have about a month left on the contest. If you want to get your eyes on in, in the, into the chat room and see what people are creating, now's the time to come in and get a sneak peek. And it's not too late to start participating if you're late to the party. And if you guys enjoy the show and everything that we do here, please do consider supporting it through the Patreon program. Links can be found down in the description below for everything, including today today's creations starting with skyscraper created by Dwarren Ice one of our discord advanced builders and here they say hey Johnny and company this is a coaster I made a while back from my society park it's based on the polar coaster principle which I wanted to do for a while since the park had been going been ongoing for a while I first created this when we still weren't able to turn off scenery collision after it did I made some adjustments it's quite a gnarly ride so make sure you didn't just eat <laughs> keep doing what you do Dorn ice boom <laughs> awesome all right let's take a closer look at this so the polar coaster principle idea is pretty crazy i was looking at uh, some of these online with the florida's polar coaster this one doesn't quite reach the same heights but it still has the same concept and it looks really freaking difficult to pull off because you're launching it upward and then uh, you have to control the momentum the whole way down so it's going to be interesting to see how this rides i love the way your boarding station looks the scenery is quite elegant simple but clean it looks great so uh let's take a closer look at some of these stats it's a launch torque coaster but i'm really interested to see in some of these g-force g-forces the uh, max of vertical g-force is 5.34 it all seems tolerable here so good control here seven inversions three airtime counts there's nothing here that stands out to me as crazy so this uh looks like it's very well controlled let's get on and uh feel it out Boom, there it is. I definitely love this. It's such a unique idea or a unique creation because you, you get launched up and then from here, it's just gravity does the rest. Gravity's pulling us down. You got so many block sections in here. So how many trains are actually running on this at all times? Three, okay. Felt like a little bit more to me, but there's actually just three there. But yeah, gravity's just doing its job, bringing you down. It's controlled very nice. It's not too radical or crazy at any time. It's just a, a, a fun design. And it's crazy to think that you, know, you launch up and the coaster's here and it's not using any force other than gravity. And in order to get the coaster down safely and have it a fun experience, that's how much track it required. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. I love it, Dwarf Nice. Keep up the good work. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. And before we check out the last creation, I just want to see if there's any lighting. Nope. 
Okay, let's go check out the next creation of the day. Pronghorn, created by Mr. Mule, one of our Discord beginner builders. And here they say, hey, oh, Johnny, this is the first creation I've ever made. Uh, I'm super excited to finally send in a submission. I've been watching your videos for so long. Pronghorns are the second fastest at land animal between the cheetah, Google says. <laughs> well, I didn't actually know that. So based on the coaster after it, you are one of the first people to ride on Pronghorn. On this realistic journey, you will go through two inversions. This is a dual launch coaster. I tried my best to get a realistic as I can. I use a four meter autocomplete method. My inspiration for this coaster was Maverick at Cedar Point. Use uh, 10 feet to three meters for width. Uh, okay, this is just pathing explanation. Thanks for all the Discord members who helped me and thank you for creating such a great community. Oh, you are very welcome, Mr. Mule. <laughs> so here we go. He was talking a lot about the uh, setup, but we're not really setting up these blueprints anymore. And if anyone's wondering why, it's just because, well, we're, we have the cinematic shots now. And a lot of these blueprint coasters, they don't normally have crazy queues like the ones you see in the parks. So we like to go down the queues when we're in parks but not so much with these blueprint coasters because they're usually pretty straightforward. However, this one does have a pretty complicated queue, but you can use your imagination and understand where the paths are going to be. But there's still, as you can see, this one is one of the biggest queues we've ever seen for a blueprint. And it's not, there's not a whole lot of crazy details, but it's still a fun queue overall. So well, you got a good look, good look at it here. And uh, let's check out the coaster now, which we have a Typhoon Infinite. Here's a look at all the results. Stats all seem pretty good here. So, uh, Let's just reboot it up and give it a go. All right, there it is. A first time creation, first time creator. I think it's a really solid coaster and I do see some of the similarities and inspiration drawn from the Maverick coaster, the double launch, the upward launch, and then a lot of the, uh, it's it's hanging really low to the ground. It's traveling really low to the ground. And uh, it, if the track has a somewhat similar feel to the Maverick coaster, and that's what you're going for. Now, in terms of the theming stuff, I actually think it works here. I'm usually not a fan of just these coasters laid out with a bunch of trees and stuff, but because of your backstory and you're saying you're a pronghorn antelope running through the forest, it makes sense. And I think I got lucky because I placed it down in someone else's park <laughs> and it just feels like the paint job was just so done well, but I didn't do this and he didn't do this. It just so happened to be where I placed it. It just worked out so well. <laughs> but I think like the little shrubs, the rocks, the way you've placed things, it actually looks good from the rider perspective. I don't really, um, I mean the pronghorn laboratory. <laughs> I don't know if that was like necessary. That's pretty much all of your part count. Well, it's a thousand. It's a quarter of your, your part count. What is your uh, 2000 overall? So it's half of what you use. But yeah, I don't really um, know what the idea is there. I guess it's like a research facility researching the pronghorn. I think it kind of works but it, if, if that's the case i would have used your other pieces to make the queue a little bit more interesting how about some informational signs about the pronghorn and uh you know some statues like a pronghorn statue somewhere uh just some like you know get kind of planet zooey with it in here that would have been my uh feedback to you because then you really feel in the pronghorn vibes as you're going through the queue and getting to the coaster but i think overall the coaster design was fun uh, a, a magnificent build for a beginner who's never made anything before uh absolutely 
absolutely incredible. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below and let's check out the last creation of the day. The Incredible Hulk Coaster created by Nate the Great 25, one of our Discord advanced builders. And here they say, Hi Johnny, I've spent the past six weeks working on a recreation of the Incredible Hulk Coaster from Universal Islands of Adventure with the new F25 coaster type, which is the drive wheel coaster. The layout is as accurate for the most part with some inconsistencies. The version I made was supposed to be the pre-refurb, uh, but there was a few uh, pictures of it, so it's a mix of both. I originally wanted it to be the blueprint, but in the end it was 15,000 parts and 300 buildings, uh, so it wasn't going to work out. The coaster was the same stats as the actual Incredible Hulk coaster for the best uh, rides. Uh, ride during the day to track view, at night go guest facing while in row 8. Then turn the camera around to face the forward and zoom in so you would be in an imaginary ninth row. Okay, thank you so much for all you do the community, I hope you enjoy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the Incredible Hulk. I gotta say, I was looking at images, watch the video. The coaster is as, as accurate as you can get and there is some inconsistencies between the two as you said the refurbished uh version versus the old version but i still think that this is just phenomenally accurate down to like the weeds and the shrubs and the paint job done on the 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 surface level it's so well done the block sections are placed perfectly there's everything about it is just perfect even the, the crazy launch although i think uh, this one it might be missing lights. We'll see at nighttime, but it's really cool. Absolutely amazing. It looks spot on. I mean, what else can you say? It's amazing. So all we have to do now is ride it. So it looks like we do have a queue. It's open to the park. It was a park file. So this is one of the rare times that we actually get to go down the queue. Good googly moogly. So if you've ever been on this uh, coaster, leave a comment down below if you've been on it. I want to know how many of the viewers have actually ridden this coaster in real life and then also give your thoughts of it. What did you think? So with this, I think we should actually start at nighttime. And we had this crazy explanation. Ooh. I got to take a second peek at this. We had a crazy explanation of what seat to ride. So let me re-check uh, this. At night, do guest facing while in row eight. So, guest facing, row eight. Then turn the camera around to face forward and zoom in so you would be in an imaginary row nine. Oh, wow. Okay, we've never heard anyone give instructions like this before, but I'm worried that the camera doesn't follow. Well, I guess we'll find out what happens and then we'll ride it uh, normal for day view. Can I say that that was incredible? <laughs> really well done. So we want to switch this over to daytime now. And we're going to do, I think, track view is what he asked for. So we're going into track view. Let's check it out. Speaking of track view, I just realized the last coaster that we read, he said the smoothing, he did the smoothing trick. So we might have to go revisit that in track.
And as you can see from the track view perspective, that was stunning. Uh, an absolutely amazing recreation here today by Nate the Great. That was certainly great, Nate. Now, as, as I said, this one I should have ridden at track view, but I wasn't, I don't think he said to ride at track view, but usually if you do the, uh, the, the smoothing meter method, you do want to ride it in track view. So I want to give this one another chance because it might ride better like this. Definitely much better. Now this was a architect bundle. And speaking of bundles, I want to have a little discussion for the ultra fans of the show, the people who watch every episode and, uh, you know, stay to the end and all that. We'll have a little poll up in the top right hand corner. Hopefully I remember to do that. And if not, just leave a comment down below as well. Do you guys like the coaster bundle spotlights? Because as you can remember, the first, what, 600 episodes were all uh, singular coasters per episode. The, so there's been I've been having some discussion with the gang about the, the bundles. And obviously there's a lot of discussion going into creating the bundles, but it has a lot of pros and it has some cons. And I want to discuss that with you guys here today just to get your thoughts and opinions on what you prefer so obviously with the bundles you're getting three coasters per episode which is a huge pro and with that um it's hard to say but like some of the newer builders i don't think this would have like this one here in particular back on the old show i don't know if this would have been, because we have so less options we have so fewer we tended to go for some of the higher quality creations not that this is a bad quality creation but it would have been hard to to make this longer than a five minute video. And if you're just putting out three, four, five minute videos every single day, that's really not a whole lot of content, even if it's daily. So with that said, we try to create, we try to pick the best ones, the ones that have been worked on for a very, very long time so that we have more content to talk about. We can write it in multi multiple perspectives. We can see it at nighttime. You know, we can look at all the details. We can set up the queue, walk down the queue. So we spent, oh, there's a lot more intimacy. It was a lot more hands-on and, uh, and a longer look at each of the creations but it was only one per episode one of the reasons i decided to start doing the bundles is so that we can always fit in a newer builder um, a mid-range builder even an expert and then also like a master builder or something we, we could spread out the ranks and it gives more people more of a chance to get featured on the show with that said we're, we're spending less time on each creation and i don't know if people prefer that did you do prefer seeing a closer look at going down the queues, the setup and all that? Um, or did you prefer the cinematics getting straight into it and bang, 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 three amazing coasters? I feel personally, this is more entertaining start to finish. There's a lot more to look at. There's a lot more to talk about. There's a lot more going on at the beginning in the intro with all the cinematics. Um, so I, I saw a lot of benefits there. But the downsides to this is that we're not spending as long on each coaster we're not looking at all the details closely because we're limited on time and we don't want these to be hour-long videos and it's a lot more work for me i got to get three times the cinematics i got to set up three coasters well i'm not actually setting them up i'm just placing them down so that's why otherwise it would be a lot more work but then the editing you know, there's, I gotta get the screenshots for each one, I gotta get the cinematics for each one, and I gotta edit them all together. And they end up being, generally speaking, 15 to 30 minute episodes rather than generally 10. With that, it's been a really hard to keep up with the daily coaster videos because the bundles take such a long time to do. It's been a lot more editing and it's been a lot more work 
Whereas uh, before with the old method, I was guaranteed to get one coaster a day out. But with this method, we're, if I were to get three a day out, we'd be looking at 21 coasters a week as opposed to say seven. And because of that, I'm falling behind and it's been hard to keep up. And there's been days where I miss a couple days here and there. Uh, I don't think I've consistently gotten daily videos out since we started this because it's been so difficult. So bringing this all back around, what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the bundles or do you do you like the old single method? And maybe what we can do is with the poll, if everyone likes the bundles still, or if everyone likes the singles, or if it's split, maybe we could consider bringing back some of the singles. And that's what I wanted to test out this week. So I have some single spotlights picked out and I want to see analytically how it performs and how it does and uh you know i just want to see how the old method would go and also see how much time it leaves me at the end of the week and if i can finally get caught up in a head so maybe what we'll do going into the future is maybe three bundles a week and then the rest singles um, but then we have parks on the weekends, of course. So there's only really five weekdays and then two on the parks on the weekend. But if I'm, I'm ahead on time, maybe that allows me to get double uploads for the weekend. We could see a coaster and a park. So there's definitely some benefits there and I've been doing nothing but bundles. So, I mean, I've thrown a couple dark rides in there, a couple singles. I know Zell likes to do just single features once in a while. Uh, but for the most part, every single creation or every episode in the last, uh, what, eight months or something have all been bundles. And that has been an extreme amount of work but that also kind of technically means we've seen three times as many coasters as we would have uh last year so we've gotten a lot more out but it also means we're drying up our inventory faster and faster and faster <laughs> So what do you guys think of the bundles? Let me know uh, if you've enjoyed it so far over the last eight months or if you missed the singles and if you would like to see a mixture between the two or if you'd just like me to stick to the bundles or if you'd like me just to go back to the singles. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts because uh, your feedback, your opinions and what you think of the show. I always read the comments. I always go through the comments and I'm always trying to constantly improve and innovate and you know three years into Planet Coaster and I still think we're always adjusting and making improvements to the show and I personally feel like the bundles have been a great great addition but it's also been uh pretty tiring it's and i'm not tired of it it's just a lot of work and i feel like maybe i'm overworking myself by doing too many bundles so maybe i could just space it out a little bit but ultimately you guys are the deciding factor because if it's something you really really enjoy i will definitely stick with it and uh put the extra effort in and if you guys enjoy all that extra effort and the improvements on the show please do check out the patreon page and support it further because we can really use your support uh right now as you know, Planet Coaster is getting older, viewers, views are getting lower, and it's getting harder and harder to maintain doing the uh, spotlights and stuff. And hopefully when Planet Coaster goes to consoles, that should uh, bring in a larger community for us. And, and maybe it'll turn things around for Channel 5 Gaming. Boom. So that's going to do it for me here today, ladies and gentlemen. I love these creations. What did you think? Leave your comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode when we do a single feature. <laughs> Bye now.